coming up on Inside California Education. Teachers need other teachers. This is not a, a profession where you can be a one-man show. Teaching Great Teachers, a professional learning community in Fresno, is bringing teachers from across the valley together to spend a day of learning at the zoo. Tyler is a tremendously talented, self-aware, articulate representative of the best of LA Unified. We'll meet an ambitious high schooler who's the only student school board member of the Los Angeles Unified School District. Discover how the Santa Rosa School District is bringing music back into the classroom through a new program called the Music Blitz. We share so many common interests, it's never boring to go to rehearsal. And students are making their voices heard by creating short videos delivered to school boards across California. It's all next on Inside California Education. Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $34 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $211 for each full-time student based on $1.7 billion contributed in fiscal year 2017-18. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. She's a very young elephant. You can see it when you're close to her. She's it's a sunny day at Fresno's Chaffee Zoo, and this tour group is soaking up as much information as they can on a special behind the scenes tour. And so they came from Swaziland. Swaziland is experiencing a very extreme drought. Everyone on this tour is a middle school science teacher. They come from different schools and different backgrounds, but they all share one thing in common a desire to be the best teacher they can be. The Fresno County Office of Education has been visiting our zoo for about five years now. They come out and hold workshops in our Simba classroom um, here in our African Adventure. They get to spend a couple of days working together, teachers helping teachers just become better teachers for the community. Four times a year, these teachers come together to sharpen their teaching skills as part of a professional learning community, also called a PLC. It's a group of teachers who all teach the same subject coming together and working and learning together. This year I have 200 teachers participating, 7th through 12th grade, and that accounts for 13 different counties that are outside of Fresno. People will drive up to two to three hours to come, and they go back and then train the rest of their 7th grade. So the outreach, the ripple effect for this is hundreds and hundreds more than come here. Being a part of a professional learning community is especially important for teachers like Nikki Luckin and Natalie Geary, who both work in rural school districts. I'm by myself in the classroom. I'm the only science teacher on our K-8 campus, so I didn't have anyone to get ideas from. I can remember sitting at the board and being like, okay, you know, trying to like get ideas down, and I'm like, I have nothing, and I have no one to turn to on campus. So here, I have a lot of people to turn to. Yes. So I gave them pictures like this, and then they had to identify what the uh, relationship is. We always joke around when they say collab with your district. I'm like, hey, me, myself, and I, here I am, you know. It's really hard to think of things on your own, uh, when usually there are bigger districts that have 10 to 12 people coming up with their new material, which it's really hard for me to do. The workshops cover everything from new science standards to building a good lesson plan. Today, the teachers are talking about visual note-taking. It's a way to help their students better retain information using colors and drawings. What I see happening in classrooms is students have their notebooks out, and on their device, they can filter through images as they're trying to take their visual notes. Teachers in this professional learning community say they come away with real concrete ideas that they can put to use immediately. 
I have never left one of these meetings wondering how am I going to incorporate this. Every time I've left this PLC, it's been how soon can I put this into my lessons? I cannot wait to show my kids what I learned today. I am emailing teachers during the trainings of look what I just found out about, look what I just learned, check out this website. There has not been a single moment of these PLCs that has not been beneficial. Just talking to other people and uh, getting to hear their ideas has just been an eye-opening experience. I mean, the way I present science now is so different than before. My views of how to teach the science has really been transformed. Where before it was a lot of direct instruction, and now it's more student-centered. Each workshop is eight hours. They're paid for by the teacher's home district. Most workshops take place at Fresno County's outdoor education site. But once a year, teachers are giddy with excitement as they gather at the zoo. The teachers love the zoo day. It's the thing they look forward to out of the whole four times we meet. It kind of reminds them that they were all science people to begin with, right? And that reinforces their love for science and nature when they come out here. Plus, they get to go behind the scenes and see things that the public doesn't. Today I got to go to the behind the scenes areas of the elephant exhibit and the lion exhibit and that is something that is amazing. I can take back to the school immediately and tell my kids about it, get them excited about it. But more importantly, I, it makes me excited to be a teacher. It makes me excited to teach the things that I get to teach. We're able to see individual uh, housing for these animals if they are ill, if they're birthing, if they just need to rest and get away, if we have inclement weather. Uh, a place where they can go for a safe place. It's also a chance for us to see how they deal with the health of these animals, making sure that they're safe, examinations, medical needs that go on. The Fresno Zoo also benefits from the partnership. They hope these teachers will inspire a new generation of animal lovers through school field trips or close-up animal encounters. For our programs on-site and off-site, we do see about 25,000 students every year, and about 100,000 come to the zoo outside of that. So we're a pretty busy place for school, school groups to come. Many of these teachers have been a part of a professional learning community for years. Nikki Luckin signed up for the first workshop seven years ago and hasn't missed a year since. I'm the type of person that always wants to do really well at her job and this has given me a place that I can improve myself and make myself better and it's just such a valuable tool. I wouldn't be the teacher I am today without this PLC. Teachers need other teachers. This is not a, a profession where you can be a one-man show. You can't be a soloist, soloist here. And the thing that I love most is that we all have different perspectives. We work with different kids. We have different uh, dynamics to our teaching. We have different years of teaching experience. And when you put all of that together, it makes this beautiful, cohesive unit of teachers who are sharing strategies and ideas and methods and lesson plans. And it makes us all better teachers. I absolutely adore this program. In a national survey, high school students describe the best teachers as those with whom they can build a trusting relationship. They also say great teachers are patient and kind, passionate about what they do, and understand that different students learn in different ways. Justice for All is a phrase that has significance for Tyler Okeke. As the only student school board member of the Los Angeles Unified School District, Tyler sees his role as an advocate for equal opportunity and equal access. I think we have to actively like, think about ourselves and we have to actively think what do we do to get where we need to be. And like, I think that's something that um, I've kind of embodied and when I think about it, it's not always about like selfishness about like just thinking about yourselves, but like I've kind of positioned myself in a way that like I love to serve others. LA Unified is the second largest school district in the nation after New York City. Tyler's year long term on the board has included a teacher strike, financial challenges, and controversy surrounding charter schools, all of which, Tyler says, make it imperative that he speak up for the district's more than 600,000 public school students. LUSD is a huge district. There are so many interests at work. We have the union, we have the Charter School Association. I think it's important that we have students there to kind of center the agenda of the board and kind of remind them who they serve because we are the largest and most important stakeholder in the district's activities. 
Tyler's work at the monthly school board meetings comes at the same time as he carries a full load as a graduating senior at LA's Harbor Teacher Preparation Academy, earning college credits as he fulfills his high school requirements. Our students are duly enrolled at Los Angeles Harbor College and high school here. They concurrently take classes at both. The students have a great experience being on a college campus, which they go to their classes and then come back. And also, we have a really rigorous academic high school program, which has all the courses that they need for graduation, plus AP courses, honors courses, and some electives. The first thing I want to do is just give you the basics of genetic engineering so you guys know how it works. And then One thing I love about our school here is that we have a lot of teacher support. So starting from ninth grade, I've been taking college classes and actually um, I've done everything I need to get an Associate of Arts degree. Tyler recognized his interest in school and community service at a young age. He decided early in life that politics would play a role in his future, maybe even a run for the White House. I didn't always tell people that because like when you tell people that you want to run for president one day, sometimes they like brush it off or think, yeah, you're just a kid. So I started to say like I wanted to be a lawyer and I still do. He takes time to listen and he he reads a lot, he tries to find things that he is passionate about to talk to others. He is a natural leader, uh, advocates for those that can't and advocates for our students. It's almost innate for him. The son of Nigerian immigrants, Tyler's been involved with the Mayor's Youth Council, the Metropolitan Debate League, and the Harbor Political Action Committee. Tyler won his school board seat after competing against a number of other students across the district. I just thought that this would be amazing, especially because like I'm very restless as a student. Like I like to be out there doing important work and this was like an avenue for me to finally do that work. So I thought of it at all as like heavenly orchestrated that this was supposed to happen and I was supposed to serve in this position. When I was elected to this district's governing board, I vowed that I would make sure that this district's policies are mindful of the historic oppression of people of color in this country. While Tyler has only an advisory vote on the district board, he uses his role to both initiate and support critical board topics. He's spoken out on gun violence and charter school issues. Now looking at what is before us, the reality of this debate is that parents and students are left to make difficult decisions in a broken system. A system hijacked by an unchanging bureaucracy and a state that is not as invested as they should be in funding our futures. Tyler will not accept defeat. He's got aspirations. He takes everything very seriously. He looks at the world the way many adults should look at the world. He looks at it very objectively, scientifically, and he's got goals and he's willing to understand. In order to get those goals, you've got to work hard. Tyler is a tremendously talented, self-aware, articulate representative of the Best of LA Unified. He challenges all adults to be as focused and conscientious as he is. He has amazing warmth and a desire to soak up learning and then to share it with all. Tyler hopes the day will come when the student board member will have a regular vote and be able to play a more significant role to ensure that LA's public school students have an even greater voice. I like to think of this position as kind of like a hired lobbyist, even though like there are negative connotations to the word, we are there to kind of push an agenda that best serves who we serve, which is students. Still ahead on Inside California Education. We talked about where you guys are gonna be getting the music from so that we can start our editing process. The um, Student so Voices so campaign encourages students in California to film short videos about topics that are important to them. See how high schoolers in Livermore are making their voices heard. But first, let's visit a school in Santa Rosa where a new music program is giving every sixth grader an opportunity to play an instrument of their choice. Go tell that Rudy. Go tell that Rudy. I think playing an instrument brings you joy. So we're gonna play, sing. And play. kids need more joy in their lives, and I see a, a big part of my job is bringing more joy to my life. Go. 
There's plenty of joy to go around at Luther Burbank Elementary School in Santa Rosa, where every sixth grader gets a full hour of music lessons each week. Go tell that roadie. Every Thursday, four music classes happen simultaneously, one for woodwinds, another for brass winds, plus violin and guitar. The classes are taught by a roving band of music teachers. They repeat this scene at every elementary school in the district throughout the week. It's called the music blitz. In the blitz, just the trumpets and trombones go into a room. Just the violins go into a room. Just the clarinets go into a room. And it gives the teacher more flexibility and time to work with a smaller group of kids in a very focused setting that makes the best use of our limited time, which is one hour a week. Students previously only had half an hour of music a week, or they had to stay after school a result of cutbacks enacted during the No Child Left Behind era when the focus shifted away from the arts. And I think that's what led to our elementary students only having 30 minutes of music a week. I mean, really, 30 minutes? You could barely even get in the room. We understand that student engagement is a key aspect of student success. You know, English class is great, math class is great, history is great, it's interesting, but the thing that often engages students the most are things where they're doing something. And very often that's music, or art, or dance, or theater. Elizabeth Evans and her colleagues visited other schools with successful music programs, including Berkeley and Clovis near Fresno. That's where they came up with the idea for the Music Blitz. The first thing they decided was to hold the music classes during the regular school day. Before this year, all of our music classes involving instrumental music had to happen before or after school at eight of our nine school sites. Um, the issue became kids that took the bus couldn't take the programs. Kids that wanted to do sports couldn't take the programs. Kids that couldn't stay after school for whatever reason, they walked, they had to watch little brother and sister, they couldn't do the programs. When we started this program, um, most students had no experience playing an instrument, but now every student has that opportunity. Students also get to choose which instrument they want to focus on for the year. Brian selected violin, inspired by the mariachi music his family enjoys. He practices for 30 minutes every night. I usually play inside of my room, and then when I feel like I'm ready to like play the song like for real, I go outside and then I play it for my parents and then they say their feedback and they say if I can move on to a different song. Kayla went with guitar, which she says was hard at first, but she's improving. I got better and better at it when he started teaching us the notes like G and, and uh, C. And now that they let us take some home, uh, I practice it with my family. We play De Colores and Jingle Bell Rock. Kingsley plays the trumpet and says he looks forward to music blitz days. It's fun because on Thursdays I get to wake up, I get to have bring my notes and get to play music and that makes me joyful to spend time with other people and be energetic. My mom, she liked that I was practicing an instrument and my grandma, she was really excited because she used to play trumpet and clarinet when she was younger. Educators say allowing the students to take the instruments home at night is a key part of the music blitz. They get to take the instrument home and practice, and that increases their interest and engagement and relationship with that instrument. A lot of the families are starting to get used to the extra noise, <laughs> but they uh, really has been a lot, a lot of um, positive feedback from all parts of the community. And the Music Blitz is growing. Thanks to a $1 million State Department of Education grant, the program is expanding to all 4th, 5th, and 6th graders. And I was so excited to hear that we won this grant because I knew what this was going to do for my students. I knew that now my fourth and my fifth graders were going to get the same experience that my sixth graders were having. And I've seen what a wonderful impact it makes on my sixth graders and I was so excited. We know that the arts help students be more successful because of the way it engages the brain in other ways of thinking that are maybe not always linear. And so it's a great way to engage students and also to increase a student's mental capacity to learn.
Studies show the arts have a powerful impact on academic achievement. Music students develop stronger math and reading skills. The visual arts teach kids to see connections other students might miss. And performing arts students excel in public speaking and memorization. Evidence suggests these benefits grow the longer students stay enrolled in arts education. The Student Voices Campaign was created by the California Alliance for Arts Education to speak to the need for arts for all students in every classroom every day. It was a way, means of giving students a voice to say, this is why we need the arts. Now, what will be the focus of the cameras during the ceramics class? Carol Hovey is the drama director at Livermore High School. She's checking in today with a group of students who are working on a two-minute video for the Student Voices campaign. Our video for the Student Voices campaign is about how there are so many different art types and so many different ways people can express their art through sculpting, photography, filming, that all of them should be included for everybody to feel like they have a voice in this. Most of the time we've been working on um, storyboarding it or just brainstorming just on big sheets of paper and just jotting down ideas and figuring out a story and what would be best for it. If all of the quotes together are more than two minutes, then you guys may have to look back through the quotes and find shorter quotes. Mm -hmm. The video is a true collaboration, with drama students writing the script and recording the voiceovers, and film students like Harley turning it into a reality. They'll show us a little picture of what they want us to do. We're like, okay, we know exactly how to make this happen. We'll get like some close-up shots. We're filming what their vision is, and then we go back and edit. We show them our footage. They're basically our bosses. <laughs> they learn how to collaborate. They learn how to communicate. They learn how to express creativity. They learn critical thinking skills, they learn problem solving, so it's a, an invaluable process. What if I said you can change the world by making a video? And that video is about your voice. The Student vision, Voices campaign launched in 2014 school. as a creative way to give students a voice in school budget discussions. Students from schools all across California submit about 200 videos each year all of which are judged by professionals, with the winners announced in the spring. Every video that's created by students is also submitted to their school boards. We've had some wonderful issues raised by students at the Student Voices campaign. Um, one of our outstanding videos was um, a video submitted by San Jose Unified School District students about trans and non-binary students at the school. Gender neutral restrooms should be readily available in our schools. Let's help our trans and non-binary friends. And the outcome of that video was that the school board put in two new restrooms for trans and non-binary students to use during their school day. Livermore High School students have participated in the video campaign since the beginning, advocating to their school board to keep arts classes at their school. Art is pretty much the first classes that they cut from any budget of schools. So if they see how important it is to students and how it really gets our creative minds going, I think it's very important for like the community and the school to understand that. I believe that our voices should be heard as students because they are uh, oftentimes not heard as well as adults or teachers because they think that we are too young or naive to understand what we should be. Carol Hovey says she's mindful to act only as a guide and observer during the filmmaking process, ensuring that the video really does reflect the student viewpoint. I really try not to butt in. I really try just to let them find their voice because as I remind myself, it's not my voice. I talk enough. They need to find their voice. I feel like they're a little sibling and they always have my back. Plus, we share so many common interests, it's never boring to go to rehearsal. The Student Voices campaign also introduces students to advocacy, some of which have never heard of this in their daily life, or understand that that actually can make a difference. Start have some power. Do you want to go out and ask other people what they think? Although the Livermore High student video didn't win top honors, it was a finalist. Perhaps more important, it conveyed a powerful message to the Livermore school board and community 
about how important art classes are to these young people. Art is not just for the art people. It can also be for sports people to come in and express themselves that way. It gives everybody an outlet to express themselves freely. Arts matter to people, and arts have a lot of power. They can empower people. They can change lives. Arts can do a lot of things for people. If you'd like more information about the program, log on to our website, InsideCalEd.org. We have video from all of our shows, and you can connect with us on social media. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Inside California Education. We actually just had our female lion, so a lioness. I serve the students that make up this district, a majority of whom attend traditional public schools. C, D, E, F, G, G, G. Yeah. Yeah. That is what we call a scale. If I wanted it to be really crisp and clear, I would run it through motion. Were the steps of the pre-production process that we've gone through so far. We came up with what first? Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $34 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $211 for each full-time student, based on $1.7 billion contributed in fiscal year 2017-18. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Additional funding for Inside California Education is made possible by these organizations supporting public education.